Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. I am excited because I am finally planting up my three big white pots that I have back here in my backyard. I have a south facing back of my home, which is fantastic because we get a lot of sun into our home, uh, but that makes these pots right here some of the hottest spots of my garden. Not only because it's south facing and the sun kind of beats down on them, but also I have a gray house and the heat of the house hits the pots as well. That's one of the reasons why I have this Barbara Karst Bougainvillea growing here on the south side of my, uh, my home because obviously Bougainvillea really like heat and they really like sun and they're doing fantastic this year. I do have to say I did a Bougainvillea video I think a year and a half ago, about a year ago, and I talked about using some fertilizer and I've decided I am just not gonna fertilize my bougainvillea. I think it does better when I don't fertilize it because once I fertilize it, I get way too much leafy growth. This year, I haven't fertilized it at all, and I've had, I have a ton of blooms and not annoying leafy growth. So that's my plan for my bougainvillea going forward. So anyway, back to the three white pots. Um, they were here when I moved into this house. They were actually this dusty blue color. The person who sold us the house just didn't want them anymore. And so she left them for us, which I was really excited about. I did spray paint them white because I thought that that would look a little bit better with my decorating style, my outdoor decorating style. I have, you know, white to tour, white benches, other white pots. Um, and I love them. I love them so much. They are 20 inches in diameter. So they are huge, huge pots. They take gosh, almost four cubic feet of potting soil to fill one of these up. And I have tried putting like fillers in it. I've tried putting empty soda cans. I've tried putting empty uh, plant pots, like plastic plant pots in there. And I don't like it. I like it when it's just totally full of, um, of potting soil. So yeah, so it's, it's about two full bags of potting soil per pot which yeah, it's an investment, <laughs> you know? I feel like I'm lucky because I got the pots for free, but then I have to fill them up. So because it is such a, a hot spot in my garden, I have to make sure that I put plants in there that can handle the heat. And I'm super excited about what I'm doing this year. I am doing three different types of Proven Winners annuals. And two of them are, you know, OGs, they've been around for a while, but one of them is new for 2024. And that is, let me say it right, Super Bina Pink Cashmere. I'm so excited. Let me show you guys a closer look. All right, and here she is. This is Super Bina Pink Cashmere. Absolutely gorgeous. So it's part of the Super Bina series, which I have to say, Super Tunia is my absolute favorite series that Proven Winners has. But Super Bina is my second favorite series. They just do so incredibly well for my Zone 9B garden. I absolutely love it. So these are new for 2024. You guys will not be able to get these in garden centers this year. So don't bother looking for them. They're not available. Proven Winners has actually sent me some of their 2024s to try out in my garden to see how they do so that I can report back to you guys and report back to them and just let you guys know what I've experienced with these plants. So I'm really excited about it. Proven Winners did say that this, they think this is going to be the new star of the Super Bina series, which is so incredibly exciting because there's so many good ones. There's sparkling amethyst that I love. There's whiteout that I love. There's just, there's just so many. And if they're calling this one the new star, that's really, really exciting. So it's this pastel pink color. You can kind of see it there. What I've noticed, I've had these, I don't know, maybe like two weeks just in the cans. And I've noticed that as they fade, when, when they first come out, they're kind of like a darker pink. You guys see that? And then as the umbels fade, they kind of fade to this lighter pink right here. You know, I have to wait and see how they actually grow in the ground. This is just the experience I've had just for the last two weeks. So when you talk about uh, uh, verbena, excuse me, verbena, I wanted to say superbena. When you talk about a flower like a verbena, you can kind of see that all the flowers come from one spot right here. And it's kind of like an umbrella of flowers. And when you have a plant that has flowers like that, um, just off the top of my head, I can think of uh, 
Ami is a very similar one like that. They call it an umble. So they call it an umble flower. Um, so the umbles of the Superbina pink cashmere, they, uh, Proven Winner says it rivals the size of Superbina whiteout. And Superbina whiteout, I have it in my front garden right now. That plant is incredible. If you wanna cover a big area, Oh, that plant is absolutely so pretty. And it's just like the sea of white. So if we now have a sea of pastel pink, I'm gonna be really, really excited about it. So Superbina pink cashmere gets about 12 inches tall, up to 12 inches tall and up to 30 inches wide. And it is uh, part sun to full sun, but I've noticed that they always do a little bit better in full sun, at least in my garden. So let me show you guys the other two plants that I'm going to be putting with Superbina pink cashmere this year in my pots. Okay, so with my Superbina pink cashmere, you guys know that I am going for more heat tolerance plants this year in my garden specifically in this spot where it's full sun south facing I definitely need heat tolerant plants superbina is going to fit that bill but another plant that I have a lot of this year are my luscious lantana series and this one is called luscious lantana royale cosmo and I just think this is just about the prettiest one <laughs> I've planted uh, luscious lantana pinkberry I've planted pina colada um, and then I've also planted berry blend and I don't know exactly which one's my favorite yet but so far this this one is absolutely beautiful it is like a pinky magenta and then it does have some yellowish orange accents right there it's so so pretty now you guys remember the luscious lantana series is bred to have low to no seed set so if you live in an area where lantana spreads the luscious lantana series really isn't going to spread much if at all for you there are two varieties of luscious lantana that do not spread at all they're certified sterile and that is luscious lantana red zone and luscious lantana marmalade and i do want to try those but here in california we really don't have to worry about lantana spreading it does not spread at all it does act like a perennial shrub for us though they get absolutely huge as the season goes on i want to show you guys my neighbor's lantana because they come up to my waist they're so big so all of these are going to basically be perennials for me i haven't decided if i'm going to leave them where they are or I might move them around or I might give them to other friends but that's one of the really really good things about lantana for us not only can it handle the heat but it can also act as a perennial shrub for us Royal Cosmo is just like all the other luscious lantana series plants a full sun plant the hotter and the more sun the better so definitely put this in one of the hottest places in your garden of course this is one of the hottest places and then I have a lot more in my front garden that is full sun as well it does get 26 inches tall up to 26 inches tall and about 24 inches wide so it's going to have this beautiful mounding habit that i think is going to look gorgeous in these pots i am so distracted because annie the little bunny is running around and she's got the zoomies right now <laughs> okay then finally the last plant that i'm putting in these pots with the pink cashmere and the royal cosmo is super tunia lovey dovey i'm so excited about this i think it's going to be so pretty because i actually think it's going to bring together the pink cashmere and the royal Cosmo. So Supertunia lovey dovey, it's just a Supertunia, it's not a Supertunia Vista. So it's still going to be super vigorous and super big, but not like a Vista bubble gum or anything like that. So I don't have to worry about it taking over anything. Lovey dovey gets about 12 inches tall and 24 inches wide, and it can act like a spiller in your container, which is kind of how I'm going to use it. I think with these containers this year, I'm, I'm more going to do like a mix. Last year I did um, Augusta Lavender. I did uh, Supertunia Mini Vista Pink Star, and then I also did um, the Suncredible Sunflower. And the, the sunflower took over these pots. So I'm kind of thinking they're going to do a little bit better with a recipe that kind of all mixes together and things are a little bit closer in size, which is what the three of these are. They're a little bit closer in size than having one big thriller, a filler, and a spiller like I tried last year for these guys. So. I'll put another picture. These aren't really blooming too much just yet, um, but it has a beautiful white flower with a pink star pattern. Um, so very similar to the Supertunia Mini Vista Pink Star. They just, these are gonna get a little bit bigger, of course, because the Supertunia Mini Vista is just a smaller, more compact plant. The Supertunia is a little bit bigger. Oh, and Supertunia Lovey Dovey is full sun to part sun. Okay, so like I said, 
I've got them all filled with soil at this point. I also do already have them hooked up to drip from last year. So that's gonna be really easy. I just have these long inline emitter, quarter inch emitter tubings, and I'm just gonna kind of spiral them around. So really, really easy, not a big deal at all. I did wanna show you guys, Shay said that I can show you guys. Shay, you ready to show everybody your sign? So we have a garden tour coming up in about a week and a half. Um, we're going to have a whole bunch of people coming around to see our garden. And Shay and Sadie have decided to do a lemonade stand. A lemonade slash water stand, right? So Shay is making a sign. And what's it going to say? Um, it's going to say water up here and uh, lemonade down here. Water and lemonade. And you guys are going to sit at a table and hand out water and lemonade? Yes. That's so exciting. This is, isn't this good, you guys? She did such a good job. And then what color are you gonna do the writing? Uh, black. Pretty, I love it. So we will, keep, we will keep an update on the sign, how the sign's doing. All right, I'm gonna go get started planting, okay? okay. All right, and then we have Annie. Annie, you're so cute. You're so cute. So we have two bunnies. We have Hermione and we have Annie. Annie is our newest one. She is very, very young, still a baby. We can't introduce her to Hermione yet because we have to wait until she is spayed um, or else they'll get really upset. But look how cute she is. <laughs> okay, let's get to planting. All right, you guys, I've got my planting partner, Shay, helping me out. I've got all my plants kind of set out. They're not totally bloomed out yet so we kind of have to use our imagination a little bit i've put the luscious royal cosmo more to the back because those guys get about 26 inches tall the lovey dovey and the pink cashmere only get about 12 inches tall so those are kind of mixed around in the front here we are going to put one scoop of the continuous release plant food into each hole it's going to be perfect because this guy is activated with heat and that's when it starts releasing its food so with this spot, it's going to get nice and hot and these plants are going to need some food to grow nice and big. So let's get started planting, okay? okay. and all done. It's always a little bit quicker with an extra pair of hands. So thanks to Shay. She is back over here. You can't really see because of the brightness of the sun. <laughs> she is back over there working on her lemonade stand sign. So I'll show you guys how that's turning out. It's really, really cute. Uh, but let me turn the camera around and show you guys the pots. I did try and level them a little bit. Over here on this side of the garden, Jade, Jason and I took some time to put some paver sand down and then pavers so that all the pots would be level. We still need to do that over here. We just, we have to get to it eventually. I'm also kind of worried about these pots because they are so big. To level them, I think it's gonna be a lot harder. All right, so here it is. You can see my Barbara Karst Bougainvillea back here. It's starting to bloom out. It's gonna look so pretty. And I think that color is gonna go really well with the Super Tunia Lovey Dovey. I think that that's gonna bring it in along with the Luscious Lantana Royal Cosmo. 
or Royale Cosmo. I'm not totally sure how to say that. But you can see kind of like a breath of fresh air is this pink cashmere superbina. Super excited about it. Again, I'm gonna remind you guys, you cannot find this in the garden centers this year. So wait until next year. But I bet next year it's gonna be all over the place because it's really, really pretty. And I can already tell that it's gonna be pretty vigorous for a superbina, which is what I like in the superbinas. Isn't that cool? So I have really high hopes for these pots. I think that they are going to fill in really nicely. I'm also really excited that I don't have a big sunflower in them this year because that was it it was gorgeous but it was just a little too much last year okay shay you ready to show everyone your sign yeah. yeah it's looking really good okay so shay explained it to me she has oh it's kind of half in shade she has the lemonade kind of dripping down and then she has the water splashing up and then she did water and lemonade kind of switched on purpose. She has a glass of water and a glass with lemons and now she's going to be painting all of the edges black, right? Yes. This is gorgeous. You came up with this all yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you. It's going to look so good. I can't wait. So again, this is going to be for our garden tour on May 7th. It's called the Pence Gallery Garden Tour. I will link the Pence Gallery below where you guys can get tickets. We still have some stuff that we're working on, but really it's coming together. I am almost done with everything. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it motivates you to get out and garden a little bit. Remember your sunscreen and remember to stay hydrated. I hope you have a chance to get in your garden today.